Hi everyone, this is Antina and you're watching my vlog about sustainable fashion. If you have no clue what sustainable fashion is, uh, you might find out a bit more about this trend. So what I wanted to share with you today is my experience from visiting Web Summit on top three trends in fashion that everyone in industry is talking about that are very futuristic and that are connected to sustainability. And uh, why I went to Web Summit this year is because uh, sustainability was uh, for the first time probably a big topic. What I did, I actually summarized uh, some most important parts um, on, on the trends theme and I wanted to highlight for you this top three. So first trend that I wanted to mention is circular fashion. So where we see the where do we see the evidence of circular fashion trend? Uh, do you remember the Etsy a couple of years ago it was a big spike of everyone all of a sudden buying uh, on Etsy which is a marketplace peer-to-peer -peer marketplace where people buy from each other and now we see these trends manifesting also in fashion and there are dedicated platforms where specifically uh, you can buy uh, fashion stuff from from your peers. So UK ba UK based uh, startup Depop is becoming very very popular. For example, and we had um, a speaker, uh, the founder of Depop, um, at the Web Summit talking about that trend as well. Then, if you look at um, brands, so how they tap into that uh, that trend is by renting the clothes, right? So many even luxury brands now offering uh, a section of rentals where you can actually rent some expensive clothes rather than buying. And also we had um, some successful rental startups as well popping up in different countries. And this is this business model is becoming more and more popular. And uh, uh, recently, the, there was a big one appearing in New York, uh, the luxury rental uh, startup that was called that is called Rent Runway. And Rent Runway um, is a startup that offers a subscription model, where it's not just like one-off rents, but you can subscribe and pay, uh, for example, annual subscription and have unlimited rentals of any type of clothes, uh, starting from uh, jump and dresses ending up with uh, winter jackets, uh, outwear and so on. Of course you always feel that you have new clothes, you have new dresses so you tap into that need for uh, that endorphin of you know feeling good um, what the new clothes actually give you. Unfortunately Ran the Runway is not available yet in Europe. I actually wrote to them and I asked them if uh, and when they will be available. I would love to try this model but hopefully they will be soon in Europe. So um, in terms of audience we when we talk about startups like Depop um, most of their audience is Generation Z that have a different that already have a different way of uh, different buying behaviors. So they like the gamification part of the app as well, where you actually uh, you don't go to the physical store, but also you have this experience uh, as if you are buying from your friend. So that customization and that feeling of um, very individual experience, I think that what adds up as the value. Yeah, and on the run, the runway, obviously the, the time you spend and the comfort uh, is one of the biggest values as well, because when you subscribe uh, to the app, you actually get these clothes uh, sent by post and you don't have to even dry clean them, you just return them at any convenient time. This is fantastic. So definitely time, uh, comfort and uh, convenience, not comfort, but convenience is a better word um, to say that you don't even have to wash them, right? Everything is picked up for you and, and washed and taken care of. For me, it was interesting to realize that sustainability might be not at the first place. Uh, but actually, if you can combine two as a company uh, in your business model, it's a win-win both for the customer and for the company. So trend number two is uh, micro-influencers. 
talk that I was attending at Web Summit was about that micro-influencers theme and again they put together a different uh, representative from different perspectives. So one we had a Burberry luxury brand representative and the second one was a disruptive startup again. So like in case with Depop. So I heard about this startup for the first time and about this app but it seems like it's becoming very popular as well. It's called Let's Pop. And what this app is doing is actually that you, you can share your purchases and share your recommendations for the specific uh, brands that you can find in this app um, with your friends, with the circle of uh, whatever it's your friends or family. Once your friend or your family accepts this recommendation and uh, then buys after your recommendations, a sort of referral business model, uh, you get commissions and then you can reuse that cash again for buying something else or you can donate that cash and there was the contrast of that <laughs> micro influencers as they call them in uh, Let's Pop app right so where everyone so basically everyone who is recommending to their friends and family are influencers in some way and but there are different types of influencers that we used to uh, see on Instagram and Burberry was talking about their type of influencers that they cooperate with like Irina Sheik for example and other large uh, large celebrities and the um, audience again very young audiences who are using social who are, who are uh, on that type of um, who are willing to try that type of apps and that type of a new way of uh, consuming shopping and the value is trust right so the most important value that drives engagement is how do audiences trust that type of influencers compared like micro influencers and uh, the uh, traditional already became becoming traditional sort of large celebrities as influencers and lastly trend number three mentioned at the web summit um, discussed at the web summit was luxury uh, versus digital so digitalization of luxury i would say it was very interesting to hear uh, the speech of um, the head of digital of caring which is um, so let's google what caring is Caring is a French international luxury group based in Paris and specialized in luxury goods. The luxury brands owned by the group include Gucci, Yves Saint Laurent, Balenciaga, Alexander McQueen, Bottega Veneta, uh, and so on. So now the, um, the challenge in luxury fashion uh, that they see is how to create that seamless experience between luxury shops is online where online you just have a regular website so how do you make a luxury website experience User. so very interesting what caring will come up in in terms of strategy and they already did um, quite a few interesting things and um, he was talking about not just in housing every and creating new technology that maybe the luxury brand wouldn't be uh, sort of uh, specialized in but partnering with different uh, tech companies to help uh, also they partnered with Google to uh, as a part of their Yves Saint Laurent brand to create um, a connected bag so it was sort of a backpack so examples like this uh, talk about further digitalization of luxury and um, using the big data that they have, the data on consumers uh, and utilizing that data um, in more meaningful ways so creating that customized experience for different shoppers based on their previous shopping behaviors. So to summarize the top three trends that I've seen uh, discussed at the web summit by the influencers in fashion industry, these are the circular fashion, the micro-influencers versus influencers in the traditional way, and the digitalization of luxury. So that's uh, it from my side, and, uh, um, and let me know what you think. Are there any other trends that you are seeing at the moment in the fashion, or with the sustainability sort of buzzword? So yeah, so thank you so much for watching. And hope you enjoyed this video and see you again.